let's take a few minutes to revisit the cards from the Street Fighter Secret Lair, because they just got some reskins, and there's some pretty good ones, dude. So yeah, me and about 20 of my buddies got together yesterday, we had a pretty sweet Commander Festival. I got to play against some new people and get some really interesting games in, played my Orvar deck, and everybody had to sit through that while we tried to calculate how many Precursor Golems I created on my opponent's end step. It went exponential, buddy. The highlight of the night was hearing my friend say, mm, I'm gonna cast Chun Li, she has multi kicker, and just marveling at the unabashed joy in his voice. It was like a beacon of nerd love. We all turned around and nodded like that nodding lumberjack with a beard. Now, if you're like me and you missed the secret lair, you can get these cards and all will be one set booster. So go out and buy a thousand set boosters, right? No, don't do that. Go to TCG Player. If you really want one, you can snag all these for under a buck with one or two excep exceptions. Hey, listen, subscribe, give a generous like, hit me with a comment if you want to be a cool guy. I don't have sponsors. I don't have a Patreon. I'm just a poor little chimney sweep trying to earn a tuppence. Now the first one who caught my eye was the Howling Abomination. Three red and a green for a legendary creature, human beast warrior, it's a 5-5 with haste. Howling Abomination has trample as long as you've cast three or more spells this turn. Whenever this guy becomes the target of a spell, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn and deals two damage to each opponent. Oh my god, dude, what happened to Brendan Fraser? This is the next evolution after the whale. I have some issues with this art, really, but I love the mechanics. First off, this can be built very cheaply. If you want to build a budget deck, it's a fantastic candidate. Instant sorceries and auras all target, as well as mutate, but I don't know if you want to mutate this guy. And you want cheap cantrips. If this sticks around, you're dealing incredible damage. If you untap with this, it's going to be huge. I would run targeted protection like Tamiyo Safekeeping, which is $1.50 common, by the way. Lots of ramp, lots of draw, season of growth is an auto include. You could also go heavy into auras, but they tend to be a little pricier mana-wise. There are fantastic enchantress payoffs though, and lots of good protection with auras. Very interesting card. Then we got this guy, Balden, Century Herdmaster. Four white white for a legendary creature, human warrior, it's a 0-7. As long as it's your turn, each creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Whenever this guy attacks, up to 100 target creatures each get plus zero plus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your hand. This guy, he looks like somebody who might drink a White Claw or two at noon when he's supposed to be watching the kids when they're out sledding. You're locked into mono white with this commander costing six. That's a challenge. That said, there are tons of high toughness, low power creatures that you can cast for cheap, like Indomitable Ancients, Zatalpa, Primal Dawn is good in this as well. This is a combat focused deck. I would lean heavily on white cheap removal to slow down opponents while accruing enough sweet animals to swing out. All that being said though, Balden is not a very good card. And then we have Aisha of Sparks and Smoke. Of Smoke and Flame. One red red for a legendary creature, human warrior, it's a 4-2 with prowess. Has a hybrid red-white, Aisha of Sparks and Smoke gains first strike until end of turn. Whenever Aisha deals combat damage, you may cast a sorcery spell from your hand with mana value less than or equal to that damage without paying its mana costs. She's looking fly, she's looking lovely, she's got her hair done to Harley Quinn's mom's house, and she's ready for a night out at the club. Maybe she's looking to meet a nice rich planeswalker settled down on a Lara or whatever. This has a ton of potential. Note that it says combat damage, so this triggers if it gets blocked or makes it through. The best value play is to give a double strike and pack your deck with lots of combat tricks and wheels and draw spells. It's going to be hard to block due to prowess, just cast an instant to pump her up. There are tons of payoffs for casting instants and sorceries in these colors. She's definitely a character. Cool card. Oh my god, straight out of Elden Ring we have America. Brutal Gladiator. Two black, red, and a green for a legendary creature, a human warrior, it's a 7-4. Merica must be blocked if able. As long as it's your turn, Merica has indestructible. Whenever Merica deals damage to a creature, if that creature was dealt excess damage this turn, that creature's controller sacrifices a non-creature, non-land permanent. You ever seen that documentary about the female bodybuilder who shot her husband? It's a pretty good one. Here she is stomping on some schmo. This lives up to the name, absolutely brutal. This is your Jund fight commander right here. I might convert my Xenagos deck to this. Lots of power doublers, lots of fight effects, and maybe stick Turgard in the 99 like a degenerate loser that I am. All right, Vicia, Scorching Stalwart. Two and a white for a legendary creature, human warrior to two four with training, has four and a red and untap, discard a card, Vikia, Scorching Stalwart, deals damage equal to its power to any target. If excess damage was dealt to a creature this way, draw a card. Vikia has a case of duck face, alright? 
That should be the moniker after Vikia, Vikia of the duck face. Chilling in a field with a mechanical fire fist. I don't even know what to do with this card. It's got a weird mishmash of abilities. I know it's supposed to be Ryu and that's the fireball symbol. The untap ability is so wacky and expensive. It has no evasion, can't attack successfully. It seems like people went Boros equipment with this, but there are tons of cards you can use to cheat equip costs, so that's fine. This is a deck building challenge for sure. And we've got Imad, the Storm Cleaver. One blue, red, and white for a legendary creature, human soldier, it's a 4-4. Whenever Imard the Storm Cleaver enters the battlefield or attacks, put a charge counter on it or remove one from it. Because this is Guile, and Guile has to charge to do all of his moves, dude. Go play Street Fighter. Whenever you move a, a counter this way, choose one. Imard deals four damage to any target. Imard gains lifelink and indestructible until end of turn. This has some really sweet art. It's just a hunk out there swinging his axe around, kind of warning people off with that one hand. This guy needs the counter to do the thing, but you get the option to remove it or add one. So you need ways to proliferate that counter and proliferate got a bunch of support in the new set. That's all fine and dandy, but you should probably include other synergies for your proliferate effects. You want to go with plus one, plus one counters or whatever. Soldier's also got a ton of cheap support in the Brothers War set. Soldier Tribal with the strong counters theme and Jeskai is doable. Four damage is nothing to sneeze at and Red has tons of damage doublers you can use to close out the game. Tadius, Juniper Ascendant. Oh my god, that name, Tadius. Two green and a white for a legendary creature, human monk. It's a 1 3 with reach. Tadius has hexproof as long as it's attacking. Whenever a creature you control with reach attacks, untap it. It can't be blocked by creatures with greater power this combat. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. This guy is gonna beat you up with a leaf, alright? Then you have to go home and disappoint your father. He'll be like, you got in a fight today? All right, well, who'd you get in a fight? Th that guy beat you up? The guy with the leaves? Go to your room. This is a solid little value engine. The weird abilities grant him some kind of evasion. And there are plenty of big beaters that have reach in these colors. A bunch of green guys that are awesome. The last ability can draw you three cards every turn if you have an invasive myriad creature like Battle Angels a tier, so myriad's pretty good too. And you have Zethi, Arcane Blade Master, one white and a blue for a legendary creature, human soldier, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Has multi-kicker for a white and a blue. When Zethi Arcane Blade Master enters the battlefield, exile up to X target instant cards from your graveyard, where X is the number of times Zethi was kicked. Put a kick counter on each of them. Whenever Zethi attacks, copy each exile card you own with a kick counter on it you may cast the copies. I really like the art, translates really well in the MTG. She looks like a real menace out there with her two swords. Never trust a woman with blue glowing eyes. That's what my mother told me when I was a young lad. So this is another soldier. This has combo potential and could helm a control shell where you can reuse your instance to really storm off. You can pay off into cards like Talran, Dika, Dosin of Perfection to name but a few. This is a really solid build around. Chun Li was $16, but this is selling for a meager $2 right now. So, what the heck do you guys think? I like the way they handled these. They're reskinned, so the Street Fighter cards retain their uniqueness for people who want their special bling, but made them accessible to us poor sods who missed the secret lair. Merica and Zethi seem really solid, and the Howling Abomination is a really fun budget commander. There's some real stinkers in here too, who without the Street Fighter skin and associated flavor are kind of bland and without any redeeming qualities whatsoever. Hey listen, thanks for watching, be careful out there. There's supposed to be a new weather phenomenon. First there was the bomb cyclone, now there's the roaming snow volcano apocalypse. But I think the weather channel's just trying to sell t-shirts. Sneaky G from Better Commander, signing off.